So Google just released Tab Maker, and this is a way for you to create extensions uh, for Chrome with no coding. Sounds really cool. I'm going to do a quick overview and my first thoughts of, of Tab Maker. Ultimately, the extensions that you're making will allow you to add images as your new tab instead of the generic Google search bar. So I'm just going to show you what I've done. I, I created something for the seven habits, thinking maybe I could share it out with our elementary school students. Every time they open up a new tab, they get a different habit or just kind of a random tab. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and close those. And we're going to look at how to do this. And again, I'm going to come back and kind of give you my impression of it. In order to get there, you're going to go to tabmaker.withgoogle.com. So it's not .google.com, it's withgoogle.com. And I would highly suggest you to go to the how-to and go through the instructions. But we're going to go ahead and start by making our own. We're going to get started. And you can choose from, I think it's 11 templates. And depending on how many links or places you want text to be, you can kind of see in this example all the different boxes where you'll be putting content. Ultimately, it's up to you what works. I kind of kept it simple by doing one. Uh, for this demonstration, I may branch out for two. And then we'll go next. And it'll give you a chance to do your own content or try with uh, theirs. First time through, you might want to try with theirs, but we're going to add our own content. And it'll bring you to a view-only sheet that you're going to need to make a copy of. And I'm going to call this uh, Seven Habits 2 or And Tablets 2. And it will create a sheet that you can actually edit. So I would highly suggest going ahead and closing out their view only. So now that we have that, we're going to go to Next and actually add our content. They have some here for the demonstration, but I'm just going to delete their content. And before you get started, I would just suggest looking over the format of this. So each page will be a new tab. So you can put a lot of different tabs. So in, in my case, this would be uh, line one or row one. This would be row two. This would be row three. So I'm going to close those out. And you can have a background image, or when you go into edit, you can just do a plain color. Block 1 and 2, it shows you where they'll be, and I can find a URL, or I can add text that I want to show up in those blocks. And once you get past that, you can actually put the links to those blocks uh, in these last two columns, or depending on how many blocks you have. So, fairly easy layout. Um, I kind of wish they had block 1, link 1, block 2, link 2, uh, but I'm sure they had their reasons. So for page one, I'm just going to pick an image that I have online. Now, one of my first impressions, when I, the first time I tried this, I tried to use images from my Google Drive. So in my Google Drive, um, I have a place for some tab maker images. And I went ahead and made sure that they were all shared and public and no, no go. Could not, could not get them to show up. If you've played with this and you were successful in getting images out of Google Docs to work, please uh, contact me and let me know how, because I'd be very interested in that. Um, so instead, uh, you can go and find you know Creative Commons images online, create your own. Um, we have some images for the Seven Habits that we have on our websites and things um, as part of the. Uh, leader in me initiative so I'm just gonna copy those images URLs and I would just go through and I would put it for each one now since it's just a quick overview I'm not going to do all of the images like I did uh, for when I was practicing but I do want to try to add an extra image here so um, let's say I wanted them to link to a Google Doc um, I can find that image I can copy the image address. 
Um, and then I can, I'm going to put it in block two instead of block one. And here I'm going to say docs.new. And I'm going to make sure that links. So docs.new, make sure that's actually a hyperlink. And this is going to be ultimately what you do for every page that you want or every new tab that you want. So I'm going to have my background image. I'm going to have a place for the um, Google Docs icon, and it's going to link to a new document. So I've got that underway. Now I can click Next and go to my Publish the New Link. Follow the instructions. They're not hard. You're just going to go to File, Publish to the Web. You're going to change it from Entire Document to Add Content to this Sheet, and you're going to change it from Web Page to CSV and then you're going to publish it. Once you publish it, you'll copy that link and you're going to go back to Tab Maker and you're going to paste that URL and click Next. So, wow, that's way too big. So what can I do? Well, ultimately they do give you some editing options. Not a whole lot, but they give you some. So, I can play with the background color like I said before, but I want my image as the background. I can change how it stretches my image I'm gonna to stick to contain and I can also play with the padding size of the document so how much room do I have between the borders and how much uh, space do I have between the blocks the different boxes that I have um, so I'm not going to edit box one, but I am going to edit box two. Same thing here. I can change how the image is contained. I can work on the alignment. I want to make sure it's on the bottom for this. Um, you can do left, right, or center. I'm going to do right. Block color. I can change the block color. If you do this, I spent a little while trying to figure out how do I get it to, 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 to be clear. All you have to do is come back here to the alpha channel and just change that to zero and it's transparent again. So if you do make the mistake of adding color, you can always go back and change it. Uh, if you wanted to make it round, so if I did have a color and I wanted to round the edges, I can do that. And I can start messing with the padding now. So I can go, where exactly do I want to try to get this to be? Um, same thing with the margins. So. I'm not going to be able to get it exactly where I want it, but this is the reason I put it at the bottom and the right. And notice that image is still so big, it's not going to fit. So ultimately, I'd either have to find a smaller image or I can kind of keep playing with it until I get it the way I want. But this is not as user friendly as I would like it to be. But there we go. So next, I've got this. I'm going to give it a name, so I've got all my slides. By the way, if I had more than one row, I could go in and edit each row. But I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to say fake and description, fake tab maker, extension, extension. And you can change the icon. And then you're going to download the zip file. So. You have two options, but in my opinion, unless you're already a developer, you only have one option. The first option is what 99% of you will use. This is for personal use. Um, uploading to the uh, Chrome store, you have to be a developer, which is does have a, a, a fee involved with it. And ultimately, you're going to have to publish it, wait for it to be approved, then share it out. This is the only way you can share it out to, say, your students. The only other way you can do it is to take that zip file and put it onto each student device individually. And the only way you can do that is if your district admin doesn't manage the Chromebooks as far as um, e either Chrome is completely unmanaged or it allows for the development mode in Chrome. A lot of districts block that so that students can't um, do things that would harm Chrome. So, 
Although you do have two options, most people will only be able to do this for one. This is great for something you want to do for yourself. Uh, you want to create your daily inspirational quotes and put them up every time you open up a new tab. Wonderful. You just click on that. It downloads. You can see I've downloaded it already. And you're going to extract that file. And so I'm actually going to go into my extensions. And this is where I have the seven habits, but I'm going to go ahead and remove that for now. You need to have developer mode on. And you're going to load unpack. So, um, I still have to extract the one I just made, but I'm going to load the unpacked. I'm going to come to downloads. I'm going to open uh, my tab maker folder, get the extension, select it, select folder, and now it's in here and it's on. So now... I've got my new tab with my little new doc, and I was afraid that was going to happen. So, even with this, something as simple as wanting to add uh, docs.new, very limited. So, this gets into what do I think of Tab Maker? Um, it's kind of neat. It's it, it, it's something to play with. It kind of gives students or you as a, as a teacher. Um, a way to experiment um, with extensions without having to do code. And I think it's a great starting, starting place for Google. You are going to see over the next few years more no-coding, low-coding um, type of applications so that you don't have to be, you know, a master of four different languages in order to create some basic things to use for the classroom. So this is a step in the right direction for that. But for most people, this is not going to be, this is not the next Google Classroom. This is, um, for those of you who've seen my video about smart chips, I am so excited about smart chips. This isn't that. Um, but it is, it is kind of a step in the right direction, both uh, as an introduction to programming and to these new types of programs that are going to be no code and low code. So I hope you've liked this video. I hope you've learned a few things about it, um, uh, if, especially if you've just heard about Tab Maker. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below or find me on Twitter. And please, please, please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.